to all the issues Lord keep me from going mental Help me show sure love it ain't simple And stay woke on Instagram Hello everyone and welcome back to CHH Hysteria, a podcast for CHH about everything CHH. I'm your host Cole, the one and only Miles Minnick, the Mr. Glow himself. Thank you so much for hopping on. Yes, sir. It's my pleasure, man. I love what you guys do, so it's a blessing to be a part of it. Hey, thanks. We appreciate it. We appreciate the music you coming out with. You just came out with Miles. Was it the beginning of this month or is it February? It wasn't It wasn't long ago. That was it. That was the end of February, almost exactly a month ago. Right, mm-hmm. right, cool. So you dropped the song Glow Time on that. I guess it was a single, but um, you said, drop my secular career even with my success. When did you make, like, when did you make secular music? How much and how popular was it? And then, like, why, why and when did you change? Mm-hmm. Really good question, bro. So I was doing secular music in high school when I was 15, 16, and 17 years old. Um, I was really popular in the Bay Area. I was working with all the big secular Bay Area artists. I was getting record deals on the table. Everybody wanted me under their wing. I was like that hot young artist that was good enough to compete with the grown men out here. I, w- I mean, I would rap battle these these popular gangster rappers, everything. Like I was out there, right? But when I got saved, I made the decision to not just give God my heart and my church attendance. I wanted to give God my passions, dreams, and interests as well, like giving him all of me, if you will, you know? So um, so when I was 18, 19, around that age, I just had to hand it all over. Yeah, that's dope. I, I like that, you know, like, and it's cool that you have some secular, you know, um, experience because even in CHH, you can make some secular fans. So um, it's definitely not off the table too, um, but yeah. Oh yeah, I love I love my secular fans too. Mm-hmm. Do, do you have a lot of those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In in my city, in my area, a lot of people remember me from back then, and they support. They come to the shows, they repose everything. So I get a lot of hometown love. Hey, that's good. That's good. <laughs> in your song, Miles, kind of uh, switching gears uh, in terms of songs. Uh, there's a line that says, ordained at 22, was ministering the youth, administering the truth. Then Jesus told me there's more for you to do. I want you to get into music, end quote. Uh, so mm-hmm. you were a youth pastor before you started CHH? And then yeah. that had to be. Yeah, so I have an interesting, interesting path. So I was doing secular music. Then I left secular music to give everything to God. I started to do Christian music, but then I felt like God wanted me to just dive into local church ministry, you know? So I would still like do songs for the youth group and stuff, but it was strictly for youth ministry, you know? Mm -hmm. Then at the beginning of 2018, I just felt the tug, like go all in. So initially, at the top of 2018, I was doing both youth ministry and the music, but the music was growing at a rapid pace, you know? And then I, I never told this story before. I was asleep, taking a nap in the middle of the day, and I woke up and I heard a voice. There was nobody else in the house. I heard a voice and the voice said, it's your season. I'm like, oh my God. Like, I wasn't dreaming, bro. I felt like that was the Holy Spirit, bro. Like, it's your season. And right after that day, everything started to go crazy. Like, so crazy that I could not be a youth pastor. I had to choose one or the other. I had to. And I felt the tug to go into music ministry. And God revealed to me that as a youth pastor, I was pastoring, you know, the 70 to 100 kids within the room. But as a music person as a music minister glow nation is now my youth ministry and is worldwide so essentially i'm still a youth pastor just now within the four walls would you say that you know having that youth pastor base has that helped you at all absolutely absolutely it has given me an edge an advantage you know that not a lot of other people have because being a youth pastor i got trained on public speaking you know i went through ministry courses um, where I know I know a lot of the Bible and 
And as far as like keeping the attention of the youth, oh my God, as a youth pastor, you got to know how to keep the attention of the youth. So naturally, I bring that same approach to social media, right? I do a lot of things to get people's attention. Like, I don't know if y'all been following me over the past few days, but I did this rollout with One Day called Where's One Day? And bro, like, I'm all over the country putting up missing person signs. I'm doing skits. I'm doing all this kind of stuff just to hype people up and get them ready for the sermon, for the message. In this case, the sermon is the song. So it's helped me a lot. No, yeah, your marketing love your marketing game is next level for real. Like I think that's helped you a lot. Um, you know, you have quite a you have a big following on Spotify and I think Instagram as well. You know, you got really good marketing and correct me if I'm wrong, isn't is it not Clyde also a youth pastor? I think you guys gotta hook up and do a youth pastor song. <laughs> but um No, I forgot he is. You're right. <laughs> um so how was the like you kinda got into this, but how was the transition from youth pastor? full-time and like also splitting their time between CHH. How was that transition from going full-time youth pastor and CHH to just doing CHH? Mm. Just music, I guess. Mm. So I was in youth ministry for five years. Two years, I was just a leader. Three years, I was the youth pastor. So that was my life. I mean, I was completely devoted. Like, uh, we had two different campuses in the Bay Area, and my pastor would want me to listen to his message on Tuesday to duplicate it for Wednesday. So I would be driving to Oakland, rain, shine, just every Tuesday night, get the message, try to digest it and duplicate it for a youth message on Wednesday. And all the creativity, all the events, all the fundraisers, car washes, Six Flags, even everything, it was my life. So naturally, it would be difficult for me to let go of that huge part of my life, you know? So the transition, was a little tough because of my my emotions and my heart, right? But it was tough emotionally, but it was seamless. It was seamless because it was it was like God orchestrated it. You know what I mean? So I just put that same energy I was putting into youth ministry into the music. And that's what somebody told me. One of the, the elders in the church, he said, if you put into music what you put into youth ministry, you will be just fine. And that's what I did. And it's it's been seamless. Nice, nice. That's good. Um, so kind of moving, moving on from the youth pastor. Um, so you, I know you're dropping a song with Juan Day soon because like the Where Is Juan Day stuff. Um, do you have any plans as for what else we can expect that you can unveil right now? Mm. You, <laughs> you can expect a lot from Miles Minnick. And I'm not just capping. I'm not trying to build false hype. Like you can expect the unexpected you can expect the expected you can expect the big you can expect the small you can expect the medium you can expect for me to work with all your favorite artists you can expect me to tour with all your favorite artists you can expect for me to get the biggest placements in christian hip-hop and you can expect for miles minnick by the end of this year to be top five chh hey there you go that's hype. That's hype. I'm super hyped for all the music you got coming. And you said tour. Didn't, aren't you? Wait, either you're just off tour, you're on tour with like 1K and Stephen Malcolm. I mean, those are big names. Like really big names. I just got off a tour with them. And there's going to be some more tours coming up with some more of your favorite artists. So hey. that's going to be crazy because what that does, like, not a lot of people know this because not a lot of people have been to my live shows. But how I am on social media, as far as like the detail and the excellence and the the doing over the top, that's how I am on my live shows. Like my live shows, I be going crazy, bro. Like every city I go to, and I go right before the headliners. So what do you think happens? Yes, I have Glow Nation there, but it's also their fans there. So all of their fans then also become Miles Minnick fans. So God is doing something very particular with me because a lot of these artists are co-signing me on social media, but I'm also opening for them on tour. So I'm getting everybody, like, bro, <laughs> I feel like I'm making my rounds. I'm getting their fans, their fans, their fans, their fans, their fans, and everybody's becoming Glow Nation. 
I'm sorry, I'm excited right now, bro. I just got out of a big meeting, so I'm just hey. on fire. But yeah, dog. That's dope. Um it's crazy. I mean, you got a co sign from Lecrae, right? Correct me if I mean maybe I'm crazy. Yes. I'm gonna say that's big. <laughs> like, you know, you know you're going places. That's that's crazy and congratulations on that. And I really hope that um that the next tour you on comes a little bit closer. I think the I think Invasion tour, the closest one was ten hours away from me. So I wasn't able to make it. Where, <laughs> um, where are you guys? I'm in I'm we're in Iowa. So like, you know, <laughs> Omaha, Kansas City, those places. <laughs> but um Yeah. So I was in Iowa I was in Omaha last week. Hmm. But we didn't have a show. We just we spent the night there because we were driving from Ohio to Boise. Hmm. So, I mean, kind of going on with this music thing, um, you know, over the years, and, you know, you're saying you want to be top five CHH, you know, like over the years, there's been a lot of controversy and like whether we should call people within CHH Christian rappers or whatever. But pretty much everyone agrees that the main purpose of the music in the end should be, you know, to glorify God. So like, to you, what does it mean to make music that glorifies God? That's really good. Like, so you can make music that glorifies God without saying I'm glorifying God in your music. I think if God has given you a gift to do music and you make excellent music that's not disrespecting God, I think you're giving glory to God. Like, God has created the flower to be beautiful. When that flower blooms to its fullest potential, it's giving glory to God. Right? God has given certain people genius ability. When they exercise that genius ability to model a car, to create architecture for a home, they are giving glory to God. Right? So you can you can give glory to God without saying Jesus all through your music. Now, there are some people that's called to, to edify the body of Christ and to boldly proclaim Jesus within their songs, that's one way to give glory to God in your music. But you could also give glory to God by being what you do and giving your gift back to him by giving your best to it. Because, you know, in all your deeds, everything you do, do it as you do unto the Lord. And I think that gives glory to God as well. Yeah, I love what you said. Kind of like, you know, excellence and do like when do whatever you do, you know, like, you know, if you're called to be a rapper, you know, do that great for the glory of God. Or if you're called to do, I don't know, be a history teacher, you know, do that to the great and that glory of God. I, I love that. Um, and how would you say that music, um, specifically Christian music or music by Christians are excellent? How, how has that affected you, your walk and your life? So my story could be a little different than most CSH fans because I was not a part of the 116 glory days. I had no idea who these people were or the songs they were putting out. I more so was following one Christian rapper because I didn't know how big the genre was. And this one Christian rapper I was following is from California, San Diego, and he was making like jerk West Coast type Christian rap. His name is Dre the Flame. So I'm like, this guy is crazy. So by me listening to him, it, it liberated me and freed me to be myself, to do what God has called me to do within the music. And man, because of Dreaded the Flame, like I am Miles Minnick today. I feel like God used him to build me up for sure. So did you did you listen to him before you were Christian or was that like after you um, became Christian? Nah, it was like I was a baby Christian. Hmm. Like in the youth group, they would like play, they would play his music. Mm -hmm. And I would see his videos. So that's one of the things that ignited me for sure. So then kind of moving um, from like music that has affected you, how have you seen your music affect others um, in a positive way? Or do you have any cool stories yeah. or whatever? Yeah, that's good. You know, I, a lot of people say that my music has helped them get out of depression. For whatever reason, uh, God has, you know, released me to do like happy music or confident music. If you pay attention, a lot of my courses are like empowering and, you know, giving people authority like devil want to run up on me is bad. Or if you close to the click, get a dose of it or I'm a show out. I'm a, like, what did you think? So it it hypes people up and it gets a lot of people out of that place of sadness or woe is me. But even more recently, 
with my um, title track to the EP, Miles, um, somebody pulled me aside at a concert last week on tour. It's like, man, I love your story. Uh, I'm a teenage father as well. And man, you just, you know, gave me confidence and boldness to tell my truth, give my story to people because maybe it could be a blessing to somebody else. So, so yeah, man, my music has been reaching people in unique ways. Yeah, no, that's super dope. You know, like um, being able to like empower people through your music and people you don't even know and like, Probably a lot. You probably affected a lot of people that you have no idea will never know that you've affected, which is really cool. Um, but how has mm-hmm. has is there like a specific song that has like either empowered you, or like or that you've made that has like empowered you the most, or like helped you the most personally that you've written? So empowered me, like that I go back to and it ministers to me, or like that I put out and it changed my life type stuff. Why not both? <laughs> so a song that ministers to me, it has to be Miles. The Miles song ministers to me because I really cut myself open and let my fans into who I am on the inside. You know, and I'm saying a lot of things on that track that really helped me in the chorus is like speaking for me, like God, I give you my life and my plans, Lord, without you, I can't stand. Like, that's, that's a worship song. That is a worship song. And then for me, Um, Pluto Pluto gave me a new platform W.I.T. put the nail in the coffin and after that it's been a wrap for me In 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 a good way to now I'm just like God has this upward trajectory for me that that Pluto initiated tremendously so I know you've explained it a little bit on like uh, your YouTube channel and stuff, um, but for our fans that don't follow you closely, what does Glomation mean like exactly? Or yeah, yeah, Glomation is the movement, it's the family, it's the fan base. So all of this organically happened, and I told my friends, I told myself, I told God, I said, God, I want my fan base to come organically. I don't want to have to force. A name. I don't want to have to force anything. And God gave it to me that way. There's a movie out there called The Last Dragon. It's a martial arts movie that came out in the 80s with the black Bruce Lee. His name is Bruce, sorry, Bruce Leroy. And in this movie, Bruce Leroy is fighting to get the glow. It's like when you get the glow, it's like you're all powerful. You can't be defeated. And I seen the movie. I was like, wow this this can be like biblically inspired right like being the light of the world like shining your light this little light of mine like all of that so i made a song called glow and then organically people started to call me and my team the glow team glow gang glow squad so i said oh snap we should get our own special glow names i could be glow cool right then my producer called himself globra like cobra and then all of our friends started to get glow names and then I organically one day said, Glow Nation, Glow Nation, what's good? And then the fans started to call themselves Glow Nation. And it's been building from there to now, like the whole movement is getting their own special code, Glow Names. And we're just, we're just a, a group, a movement, an army of people that is passionate about living for God and shining our light before men, that they may see our good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven. So, yeah, it's the movement yeah so no yeah i love um glow nation because i've seen i mean first of all because it's like a super unique dope idea um and like again with the next level marketing like it's beyond there like um no i know i know people personally that like you know they got in like glow nation names like uh like young gloa like uh those people like once they like you know they feel like they feel involved in it so like they become that much more passionate about your music and the movement because they feel a part of it rather than just being like yeah, i'm a glow nation fan but like i'm a part of glow nation i think i think it's really dope because i think it helps you out and i think it helps the fans out and i think it's just like i mean it's just dope <laughs> thanks bro yeah yeah it's it's man i couldn't ask for a better fan base or a better brand you know it's it's seamless um so what are some of like the benefits that you've seen from glow nation some of the benefits, it's 
it's kind of like Zealot Gang. Was Zanti? I don't know if you guys follow him. Yeah, I love Zanti. But Zanti, when he came out in 2017, he had Zealot Gang, and Zealot Gang was like a Zanti army. Whatever he dropped, they would make sure it blew up because he invested in the fans, and the fans then invested back into him. So the benefits of having Glow Nation is like <laughs> everything, bro, is ran up. What do I mean by that? I mean the comments, the shares, the engagement, everything, bro. It's it's a cheat code. It's a cheat code. Not to say I cheated, I'm paying people to be a part of Glow Nation, but it's my secret sauce. Truly. That like I have confidence now in everything that I drop because I know my fans are gonna go stupid. I know it. That's why I can confidently say this song with one day <laughs> is about to be a hit. For one, I believe God is blessed. I think it's a good song. But two, Glow Nation is gonna make sure it's a hit. So the benefit is I don't have to pay for promotion. <laughs> Although I will eventually, but I don't have to. Yeah, like you kind of said earlier, like you've organically grown this fan base, you know? So like, whatever you do, they got you. <laughs> but um, Yeah, man, it's a blessing. It's kind of moving on into our last few questions. Um, so I always like to ask the people we interview, if you were in our shoes, Cooper's Night's Shoes, and you're the one interviewing, what would you have asked that we did not ask you? Whew. That's a good one. I'll probably ask some why questions, like why and how. Like how did you come up with X, Y, and Z? And why do you go as hard as you go with the glow? But to be more specific, um, I will probably ask. I think what can make this <clears throat> make it pop is like if you ask like controversial questions. Because, like, everybody wants to know, am I secretly signed to Reach Records or if I'm about to sign? Yes. So, like, <laughs> I would probably ask that. <laughs> I will probably ask that. So, are you? Am I what? <laughs> are, are you Are you secretly signed to Reach Records right now? Or are you about to? Because you just got out of a meeting, and I'm just saying, that's sus. <laughs> they do you? Too. So, do you... Th <laughs> Do y'all think I am? All right. Like, so, did that cross your mind? Well, I've talked to someone about this before. Because, I mean, it's, I don't know. If you're in CHH, I feel like everyone talks about who's Reach going to sign next. And I was like, you know, Miles, I mean, he's done a song with Holvey. You know, like, you got a new one coming out with Wande. You know, you're connected to Dilly. Like, these are people all very connected. Like, you know, you, you got connections. And I know that for sure. And Lecrae signed. Uh, no, not signed. Lecrae called you out. Another big connection. I mean, he owns a label. <laughs> Cooper, what do you think? Uh, I think I don't know that Reach would like. I feel like they would have like a build up to it, you know. Like I know Cole told me once, like Reach isn't stupid. Like they they wouldn't just like randomly blatantly sign someone and then just like be like, "All right, cool, we signed this guy." Like they have. But what they, if there like, is a build would, up? They would have a build up. I mean, well, if there is a build up, then it's a possibility. Yeah, I just don't see it. <laughs> Well, Hovey was signed for a long time before what anyone. Was right. He was he... signed when Mad Today dropped. He was signed when Higher dropped. He was signed like for almost a year before they announced him. So you cannot judge who signed by That's what right. they're posting about. But. With that being said, um, you're just going to have to wait and see what God does this year. Okay, so that's a yes. Okay, got it. Cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, man. But um, I'm, I'm excited for that Lecrae feature, personally. But uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm confident. Wait, um, who, who are you, wait, why are you, are you just saying that, like, or did you hear something? I, I'm just saying it. <laughs> <laughs> 
So now we know it's true because Yo. you just like, oh, you heard some. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I gotta stop. I'm leaking well, stuff. I was playing. <laughs> well. <laughs> okay, we can move on. <laughs> so <laughs> moving on from um, asking him questions he can't actually answer um, so we like to also ask our uh, people we're interviewing just like a dumb question so um, it's really important though you got, we got, you got our three to think about it so like you didn't have a choice you had to start a secret society what would you call it and what would it do so I would call it the secret glow society Ooh. and Yep, the secret glow society. And um, to get in, you would have to go through the Glossal Media team, right? Like, you, they would have to recruit you on, on social media, right? And you would have to have a glow name to enter. And in this secret society, in this secret society, you would get favor wherever you go because there will be GLOW members, a part of every major entity, right? There will be uh, GLOW lease officers. There will be uh, judges, a part of the GLOW. There will be McDonald's workers, right? And our meetings <laughs> will just be like secret church. It's just like underground China church, but it will be like quality church. But you can't get in unless you're recruited. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, you already know. You know, Cooper. He he works at McDonald's. You already, you already got a you already got a candidate for your for your glow yeah. Donald person. <laughs> yeah. But um. McDonald's. McDonald's. Oh, hey. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Um. No, but thank you, Miles, for coming on. Um. Be sure to comment. You know your favorite Miles song. What you thought of what Miles said. Uh, where can we find you on social media? You can find me at M I. L-E-S-M-I-N-N-I-C-K. Oh, you got like a whole tune. Dominic on Instagram. Oh, bro, I'll be on tour running that up. Boy, don't play with me. At, at every tour stop, I get hundreds of followers because I make a jingle in the middle of my set and they follow me. But, yeah, subscribe to the YouTube. Follow me on Instagram. But follow your boy on Spotify. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get up there this year. So, yeah, man. Yeah, stream the heck out of his music. Um, you can find him on our next up see JH playlist. We'll also have that link. We'll have Miles' link. We'll have our socials link. Be sure to follow that as well. And until next time.